So I don't know if you guys saw Joe Rogan's latest interview where Elon Musk basically just straight out, almost blatantly, called me out. He challenged me, uh, he challenged my throne, and you guys might have noticed uh, he was trying to talk about how he is trying to be now the most woke, empty house business advice guy who is a billionaire with a great body and is also PG. I feel like I'm in a very unique position to, to talk about this because when it comes to this, there's Elon Musk and, and then there's me, and there's me. That's why he was, tr he was trying to subtly talk shit entire time and it's it's no secret that Elon Musk does not have a great body and he's also not PG so I'm not even going to address the competition here I just want to talk about the sad state of Elon Musk's mind that he had to get to do one think he could compete with me and two to empty his house why would he do this why would a person who is a billionaire empty their house why would they get rid of all their stuff all their possessions and on a serious note make this huge life change isn't the point of becoming a billionaire so you can have lots of stuff and possessions and cool houses and and take cool Instagram photos. That's the point of everything. That's why you start a business, right? And it's funny to me because that's what I used to think too. And in this video, what I want to talk about is really why Elon Musk probably did this because I've kind of gone through the same thing why I'm not a billionaire, okay, despite the, despite the intros, which are very serious. I'm not a billionaire, but I've gone through something very similar in my life. And I feel like if you're a starting up entrepreneur, which is most of the people that watch this channel, you're going to fall into the same exact trap. And it's a super trap because it's, it's like a siren's call. It's going to lead you in this direction. You're going to get there and you're going to realize it's completely empty and you've been ignoring the thing that's been there the whole entire time. Let me explain. The happiest I've ever been in my business career uh, is right now. And when I first got started and I had a house that was pretty much empty, I didn't really have anything. I just had a crummy apartment. And, and the only thing I had to do every single morning was wake up and work and work on what I wanted to because I didn't have any high life costs and the whole direction was just wake up and have fun working on stuff that also made money. And as I started to make more money, million dollars a year, a couple million dollars a year, all these things started to creep into that, the lifestyle, buying a house, getting expensive cars, all this stuff. And at one point, the entire point, I, I lost that ability to have fun working because I would have to wake up and instead of working on whatever I wanted regardless of how much money I made, I had to focus on things that made money right away that I wasn't particularly enjoying. And so many things came with having this many material possessions that you really are not able to do the thing that makes you happy because you're so locked into all these things. It's like a trap. Everything you buy is just a, another chain that goes on you. And so if you're watching this and you're becoming an entrepreneur because you want to get rich, you need to realize that the reason why you should become an entrepreneur is not to get rich. Because if you get rich, th that's great. And you buy a lot of things, awesome. That's not going to make you happy. And it's actually going to trap you into a lifestyle that's going to make you less happy. If you become an entrepreneur simply to enjoy being an entrepreneur, to simply build a business you're passionate about working on, one, it's probably going to make more money long term because it's really hard to do something well you don't love. Now, here's the things that comes with owning a lot of stuff. I'm not going to do any particular order. The first thing is constant maintenance. So for example, back when I used to live in Dallas, I had this giant mansion, had a pool, had all these things I thought I wanted. It was, it was an insane house. And then about a month or two into it, I realized I was probably spending like 10 hours a week dealing with AC people, dealing with pool people, uh, making sure one thing wasn't broken, fixing X leak. And it was a well-constructed house. Just when you have a big house, these things happen. And the only solution to this is to have a personal assistant and then to manage your house. And so the first thing that comes when you get a lot of things is constant maintenance. You have a nice car, guess what happens with Ferraris and Lamborghinis? The wheels start squeaking all the time because they have these special types of ceramic brakes I'm not even sure if that's the right word. They have these brakes that start to squeak if they're not used a lot or they're not driven like a race car. So you're going to be pulling up everywhere and it's going to be squeaking. So you're going to be taking into the shop trying to get things squeak, unsqueaked. If you lose your key to a Ferrari or Lamborghini, it's like the end of the world. You have to like, it, you, you can't even imagine all the stuff you have to go through. And then all these things you have in a giant house or car or whatever fancy stuff you're doing, you start having to maintain them constantly. And so you're going to have to start focusing a lot of your time on these things instead of the thing that makes you happy. And the stuff will then start to weigh you down. Look, when you have a super nice car, super nice house, and all these, these things, you're not really free. You, you can't leave that house whenever you want. You can't go and do things whenever you want. You have to constantly be locked in or taking care of said things or hiring people to take care of said things. And what happens is you, stop, you start losing the ability to be free. For example, when I just had a one-bedroom apartment, I could just move to the Caymans for six months like that. Right now, where I'm at right now, I can, I can move instantly. All I own is a bed. Okay, and I can bounce between wherever I want to go. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. What you'll also see is that the amount of money that goes into these things, it starts to weigh you down because you have to be worrying about the investment you put into these things. You have to be worrying about the bills that are coming in. And you start not being able to be as 
uh, I'll talk about this more in a second, aggressive with your money in your business because you're like, oh yeah, I have this baseline lifestyle thing that always needs to be covered. And when your lifestyle costs like twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars a month, what happens is like you, you start having to worry about that. Like worst case scenario, what would happen? How could I not pay that? And I'll explain how uh, NFL players actually get bogged down right here and why it's better just to not have things, at least when you're building something. What a lot of entrepreneurs do is when they're when they're getting started and they're building their initial thing, they also start trying to also go and live the lifestyle at the same time. You should exit your business before you go and get loosey goosey. You should be retired before you have tons of ridiculous stuff, or you should not be having to work constantly. You should be at the point in your life where like you can spend an hour a day talking to AC people or something like that. Like I said, it starts to weigh you down financially. And then what starts to happen is death by a thousand cuts. And this is how NFL players and NBA players go broke. And this is something I noticed with myself way ahead of time. Like I never kept my, I always kept my lifestyle to about 10% of my income. Having all this stuff, you start to notice that you have this death by a thousand cuts thing that starts happening. So you get a house. Okay, great. Then there's property taxes. Okay, great. Then there's realtor fees. Okay, great. Then there's just repairs and maintenance. Uh, okay, great. Then you have all these expensive items in your house that can be broken. Okay, great. What's going on here? And then slowly all these things start to build up. All these things that you don't really think about. And you might say, oh, you shouldn't be buying stuff. You're not thinking about stuff. Of course. But what a lot of entrepreneurs do is they go and get this stuff and then all these little cuts start stacking up and then they go and get another thing and then they go and get another thing and they go and get another thing. And they think, oh, this is cool, this is cool, this is cool. And then what happens is when you're an entrepreneur, things go up and down. You might have seen Elon Musk talk about how like he's running low on money recently a few times in like a few of his posts because things go up and down, things go up and down, and they go up and down. And what happens to NBA players is they get all this stuff in their rise and they think, okay, cool, 50,000 a month isn't that, that hard to keep up with. 100,000 a month isn't that hard to keep up with. And then what happens is they stop and all those things, those bills keep coming in, those bills keep coming in and then you run out of income very fast. They're not, the cost of having those nice things is so much more than the cost of having them. And so I noticed with my house and everything, I'm like, dude, you were spending so much money just on crap you're never gonna get back. Paying contractors, paying people to do this, paying people to do that, you have your car. It's absolutely nonsense. It's better to keep everything as simple as possible. That's why I basically live in a box in the side of a building that has one air conditioning unit. It's super simple, it's just a room. I just live in a room and I don't have to worry about anything. I, don't, I know exactly what my costs are every single month and I can be able to keep them very, very low because that's where they stop at. There's no hidden fees, there's no hidden anything. When you start buying stuff, there is going to be hidden everything. It's just part of it. That's, that's exactly how really rich people get suckers to give them all their money. They get them to buy these nice things that come with all these bells and whistles and all the money starts getting sucked out of them. So don't do that. Don't do it. And then when you have to focus on these bills, you have to focus on the maintenance, you have to focus on the having of the things and keeping up with the things. It becomes a massive distraction in your life. And so what you're going to see is the thing that gives Elon Musk his most, most satisfaction, if, at least if you listen to what he's talking about in Joe Rogan's interview, is working on his businesses and trying to get to Mars and all the other stuff that Elon Musk is doing. That's what gives him satisfaction. And when you have all these things, I can't even imagine having four or five homes, however much he had. It is a constant distraction in your life that you have to constantly be focusing on. That or you have to hire people and then manage those people to do it. And it just sucks your time into the thing that really makes you happy, which is working on the business. If you are an entrepreneur-minded person, the only thing that's going to really deliver you happiness is working on that business and building meaningful things. And when you have that distraction, you have that money suck, you're not able to focus on the things you want to focus on first off. And then two, you're not able to put your full time into it because you're constantly just stressed out about something. For example, the top floor, my big house that I had in the summer times, it faced the sun. And so it always get really warm at nighttime. And I can't imagine, I spent so many hours trying to fix the, uh, the, the heating temperature of the house and make that room just right so I could sleep in it. And these are the things that come with having a big house. It's absolutely ridiculous. There's so many variables that are out of your control when you have a big house or lots of material things. And what this really does to you as well is first off, it locks you down into having to build businesses to fund these things. And of course, when I was building, when I was doing this, my lifestyle cost me probably like 20,000 a month and I'm probably taking in like 300 to 400,000 a month. So it's not like crazy or anything like that. So it's not like I'm burning through money. It's just the distractions and the downside that comes with having these things. So for example, when you have a multi-million dollar house, you have this, this, this several hundred thousand dollar car, there's massive downsides to having these things because you can't get rid of them quickly. And if you do get rid of them, you're gonna lose a ton of money if you're trying to get rid of them quickly as well. And so what happens, this death by a thousand cuts thing starts to get its claws into you. And so the reason why NBA players, you see them go bankrupt all the time is they buy all these things, but then they can't get rid of the things at the price they bought them for. 
They get all these cars, they get all these things, but these things devaluate instantly because they usually are foolish what they're buying and they can't get rid of them quickly. So they get locked into this death by a thousand cuts and that starts to suck them dry. And what happens when you have all this downside, you have all these things hedged against you, you can't be risky with your businesses and you can't do the things that you want to do because you have to think about at least money. And I feel like this lesson right here applies more so to startup entrepreneurs than Elon Musk. I don't think Elon Musk is worry, has to really worry about not being able to pay for his things. He is a billionaire after all. But a lot of entrepreneurs in the million a year, $2 million per year, or even the 50,000 a month kind of range, they make these mistakes. And when you combine these things together, your inability to take risks, the constant distraction, being weighed down, having to constantly put your focus into all this nonsense, you become a much weaker entrepreneur and you can't focus on the things you love. And it's just, it's just terrible. So what I really wanted to say in this video is just don't do it. Just skip it. I guarantee you, if you get a big house, you get a fancy car and everything, it's going to be really cool at first. You're going to impress a lot of people that you don't care about, and you're not going to really do much for the people you do care about. They don't care if you're living in a box or not. Just, there's, there's, no, there's no enjoyment in just owning nice things. Trust me, if you have some big giant house, you're just gonna have a big giant house. The only thing that's really gonna change in your life, it takes you longer to walk to your office. You're, if you've ever played like a video game, imagine a video game you played where you, maybe you played The Sims or something, and you got this big giant thing or you hit the big goal. What, what happens right when that goal is hit? You stop feeling enjoyment. It gets really boring very quickly and then suddenly you're just stuck with this, this succubus of a thing. And you're gonna be confused. You're gonna think, why, why am I unhappy? Why don't I? why don't I feel like I'm, 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 why was I happier before this thing? And what's going to happen is you're going to realize maybe after years, it took me years to realize it, that the thing that bought all the things was the thing that actually made you happy. So just, you can stick to the base thing. And if you stick to the base thing, you're going to be better at the base thing. Okay. So that's all I wanted to say. Just a general rant for you guys. And that's it. If you like videos like this, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I run ads to people that fit that demographic in AdWords. If you're like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You'll see an ad where I give away thousands of dollars of old courses I used to sell. And that being said,